Growing up on Together with Karen Lee, it's something we take for granted. Getting dressed, but not all clothing is created equal. So you don't need to necessarily have to have someone helping you to get dressed. And I always say, like, why button when you can magnet? Well, seeing a problem and solving it is one of the things that we highlight here on Together. Isn't that what coming together really means? Trying to make our neighborhood, our communities better for all of us. And that shows itself in all sorts of ways. For instance, Tori Mason found a woman who had a unique vision for clothing, and her desire is certainly making a difference. Making pizza comes easy to Aaron. But getting ready for work is a job in itself. It's amazing what Velcro and elastic and magnets and it can do for changing someone's you know, life. Alexandra Connell created the company Patty and Ricky to help people like Aaron ease the stress of getting dressed. Instead of a zipper, we have the magnets and a Velcro closure. And all the employees here at Pizza Ability will be wearing these. Her online marketplace has over 65 designers who know the challenges hanging in closets. This was designed by um, a woman whose husband had Parkinson's. And instead of buttoning, it just magnets right up. Their pieces provide the independence of dressing yourself with fashion and above all, function. You wouldn't know by looking at it that it also serves a purpose. Alexandra's fidget ring eased her own anxiety during our interview. And like most of Patty and Ricky, its support is hidden by style. So for people that have seizures, people that are prone to falls, elderly, um, you can actually wear this and know that your, your head is being protected when you're walking around or in your home. And it doesn't, it, it looks like a baseball cap. Alexandra was inspired after struggling to find her mother the perfect cane after she was diagnosed with cancer. My mom's was pink with pink roses. Now she never wants anyone with limited abilities to ever feel limited in what they wear. We do take it for granted. Yeah, we sure do, don't we? Definitely. Yeah, we do. Tori Mason is here with us now to talk a little bit more about this. We love the story so much. We wanted to uh, talk a little bit more about Alexandra and her inspiration. She mentioned her mom, but her cousin also played a part, too. Yes, her cousin has a disability as well, but, of course, her mother and that struggle to find a cane really inspire her to say, you know, why not make my own marketplace where people can go get whatever they need that's fashionable and functional? Were you surprised when you walked in there and saw all the items? I mean, we don't think about that, right? I wanted all of them. Yeah. They were really cute. I was really impressed with what she's done, and they're still pretty new. Yeah. She already has 65 new designers. It's it's really going to take off. And she seems like such a neat person. Does she strike you as just, she just seems so personable and just really down to earth? She's really humble, really grateful, and really understanding of people with disabilities, even though she doesn't have one herself. It's mm -hmm. really amazing to watch. And the little, the little thing she has, like the fidget ring, Right. You don't have to be in a wheelchair to go to Patty and Ricky. There's so small accessories that can benefit so many people. Yeah, it really makes a big difference, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, I know that she also makes some uniforms for Pizzability, which is another story that you've, um, that you've done. Let's talk a little bit about that. Oh, man, that was what a day. So we shot the story at Pizzability. We were in there at lunchtime, really quiet. Yeah. They have good pizza. I was confused. So I asked the owner, you know, what's going on around here? Mm -hmm. And she says that um, people have been walking by saying really hurtful things to the employees. And she was kind of worried that um, people weren't giving them a shot because the people cooking the food had disabilities. And pff, I went to Twitter. I told them what I learned. And I asked the community to step up. Mm -hmm. And it's it, they and boy, really did, they, did right? it. I get emotional <laughs> talking about it because I've never seen such a response. They've been packed ever since. That's so awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, Tori, thank you for coming in and, and for introducing Alexandra and her shop to us. Just fantastic. Of course. Check yeah. out more online. Yeah, we will. Thank CBS you so Denver. much. Well, who doesn't enjoy a good game of baseball? Brings together people of all ages and all abilities. That's especially true for teams in the Miracle League of Metro Denver. Those players like Matt and Dylan have special needs and game day often the highlight of their week. So you can imagine the disappointment when thieves stole their bats and balls, even the first aid kit. Well, when the friends and neighbors found out about that, they pitched in, getting those players geared up without missing a beat. We can do the awesome thing and do the best thing. And you have good manners. And great manners, no matter what happens, no matter what people say, you've got to do the right thing. Gosh, isn't that the truth? Dick's Sporting Goods even showed up to make sure that every player had everything they needed for that perfect Saturday game. Well, what does it mean to get a hand up, not a hand out? It's a different way of looking at the help that's being offered. It gives people that are struggling a real chance at changing their own lives and in turn helps boost their self-respect. 
Kathy Walsh found a program that puts adults with barriers on a road to jobs. It makes perfect dollars and cents. This is just more than I could have hoped for. The Rocky Mountains lured Emmett Folan and his girlfriend to Colorado. Before he could unpack his bags, the former Pittsburgh Zoo employee was enrolled in training for a new career. I feel incredibly fortunate. Yeah, I think I found exactly the right place for me. What is the right solution? Emmett is a student of Bankworks, a free three day a week, eight week intensive training program for jobs in the banking industry. It's learning regulations and how to be a teller, but also problem solving. And then what do I need to do to make sure it's the best solution? Goodwill runs bank works out of its career connection centers. It's for adults searching for a long term career. Candace Sporhays White is bank works program manager. We believe that we can teach anyone to be a banker. It's not rocket science, but they have to love to work with people and have a desire to succeed. Listening and communication skills are essential. How to be a team member is critical. We're a lot of different people from a lot of different places, and I love my class. And after class, Emmett takes over the register at Goodwill. He hones both his cash handling and customer skills. Graduation from the program includes a job fair. It's all about accelerating success. Well, we talk a lot about opening eyes to new possibilities. It's something we all need help with. Well, sometimes that works best by providing us with new challenges. Connor McHugh shares with us a new badge program meant to open new doors for Girl Scouts. These are getting lots of help from humans these days, including from Girl Scouts who are on their way to becoming citizen scientists. It teaches you about how to look at what's all around you. The new badges these Girl Scouts are earning to help themselves and others. And how to use what they're learning with STEM and in the outdoors to make our world a better place. Ahead on Together. Well, as much as we try to remove barriers, sometimes society throws them in front of students without even thinking. Jamie Lurie found one woman who learned early it's best to ignore all those labels. Teresa Newen knows a thing or two about breaking boundaries and expectations. Growing up, I was always told like I was at risk, whether it was because I was a first generation student, low income, a minority. Now she's studying to be a doctor while setting an example for her community. I'm here for like any support with, that they need, whether it's emotional or academic. And I think that's one of the biggest things that I would say saved me as a student. How she's giving back later on Together. Well, certainly some days we could do a better job of being empathetic to those around us. Well, what does it take for us to change our point of view? Maybe it's as simple as taking a walk. When I heard about this project of finding new ways to connect the threads of the city, I thought it was really beautiful. It's truly a chance to walk a mile in someone else's shoes, all to teach a lesson about empathy. And the hope is that that increased empathy will help everyone look past our own kind of narrow focus. That's next on Together. Together with Karen Lee, sponsored by Canvas Credit Union. We're Canvas and we've got you covered, Colorado. Go live. Looks a little like a shoebox sitting on the 16th Street Mall, but it is really a place to learn about our neighbors. It's called the Empathy Museum, filled with shoes, all donated. And what's so cool is all those donated shoes come with a story. Now, the idea is that you go in, you grab a pair of shoes that fits, and then you listen to the story of the donor as you walk the streets of Denver. Brenton Way donated his shoes and story, saying that he simply had to be one of the storytellers. And I think any any art or any storytelling that can bring us together and remind us that we're all playing for the same team and that no matter what our differences might be, whether they're geographic, spiritual, racial, city, anything else, that we always have more threads that connect us than walls or, or structures that divide us. Mm, so true. And it's that sense of togetherness the museum organizers hope will turn to empathy and, of course, understanding. So by helping people understand in a very deep way, in an empathetic way, the, the context, the, the starting point for someone else's viewpoint, it helps people move. Museum houses dozens of pairs of shoes with an equal number of stories. So if you're out there, check it out. 
What a cool way to uh, learn a little something new, don't you think? I think that's a really wonderful idea. I love it. So artsy. I mm -hmm. like it too. All right, Lauren's here now. We want to talk a little bit about all the pictures that you're sending us, and uh, we always have some really great ones to share. And of course, with school going back into session, yes. make sure you're sending us the pictures of the kids. I've seen some really fun ones on uh, Facebook yeah. and Instagram. So send them our way. Let's take a look, though, first of some summer vacation. This is Adam Long and family and friends. Maroon Bells, summer. It was just gorgeous look out there. And you can still see a lot of snow up on some of those mountain areas. And how great. It looks kind of chilly there, doesn't it? I know. They've got their sweatshirts on. And I love this picture here. Uh, we do have uh, a cutie pie here. Uh, we have had great pictures uh, coming in so far uh, this summer. And again, we love this one. This is Nathan. Uh, this is one of our producer's grandsons. And she sent it in. It's so cute. He has his uh, little guinea pigs in his front yard. And he is just having such a blast with them. And uh, I heard one of their names is T-Rex. <laughs> For the guinea pigs. Yes. And I love that. Look how sweet he is. And then it was a big weekend for me. I got married this weekend. And of yes. course, my entire CBS4 family was there. Karen, you're front and center in the picture. Just <laughs> I don't a great know how one. That happened, but I, know right. I know. I did not make it to the picture, but I wanted to show that we really are all friends outside of work and have a great time together. So it was a wonderful night. So thank you for being there. You just looked so beautiful. Thank you. When we get we're some so happy for you. professional ones back, I'll share yeah, some of them. Yeah, yeah. we'll look forward to that. Yeah. What a great weekend for Thank you. Thank you. So, I appreciate yeah. it. Mm -hmm. I know you've been excited about it. Mm -hmm. We'll share your pictures with us and we may feature them right here on Together. Just send us an email at togetherforcolorado at cbs.com. You can also post it on social media using the hashtag for Colorado. And as always, we really look forward to hearing from you. So as Lauren said, send in those photos. She chose to ignore the label at-risk student. How her de determination is now helping change young lives. Pretty cool. Coming up on this week's Together for Colorado Calendar. On Monday, you can take a silent hike in Boulder. It's an immersive music and mediation experience to connect with nature. Pick up your needle and thread for Tuesday to help sew quilts and robes for nonprofits in Longmont. Saturday, enjoy handcrafted beer and homegrown entertainment at Arts and Ales at the Arvada Center. You can find out more about these events by visiting the Together for Colorado section on CBSDenver.com. Well, some children are labeled at risk as soon as they start school, all due to their family circumstances. But it's a label that can certainly set low expectations unless a student is determined to prove that wrong. That's certainly the case with a young woman making a difference at the Sun Valley Youth Center. Jamie Leary shares her vision. I don't believe in statistics because like I was always told that I was just a statistic. She also heard the term at-risk youth a lot as a Denver public school kid. It made me feel like scared a lot. Now in med school, Teresa Newen defied the odds, but growing up, she worried all the time. I'm not on an even playing field as everyone else. She spends about four days a week with the kids here at Sun Valley Youth Center. Her goal is to let them know the sky's the limit. Just doing whatever I can to help empower them. She has the resources to make it happen because she was chosen as a greenhouse scholar. For Teresa, this means and being able to just use what I like and my interest and my passion to change the world the way that I want to. From skill building card games to hard hitting topics. Or my long term plan is to get these kids going to college, raise the um, raise the high school graduation rate and then get these kids going to college or doing trade school. It's all part of her impact plan, a main requirement for scholars and a plan Teresa has been working on from the moment she was labeled at risk. We have leaders growing in all types of communities, you know, and not to just weed out certain kids because of a stigma, because of a number, you know. We have our future sitting right there. They're going to be changing the world and they're going to come back and serve their communities, you know, so give these kids a chance. How great is Teresa? Well, Jamie talked about Teresa being a greenhouse scholar. That is a national program that works in local communities. It's aimed at breaking that cycle of poverty. Well, we love celebrating our communities coming together, and this group is all about helping the wildlife. Their fish story just ahead. Catch the latest episodes of Together, as well as your favorite Together for Colorado stories anytime. Just visit our website, cbsdenver.com. The Girl Scouts are making their programs more challenging and rewarding for its members, adding dozens of new badges. They range from cybersecurity to coding to all kinds of outdoor adventures designed to take the Scouts down different paths. Well, one Scout shares her path to being a citizen scientist with Connor McHugh. 
Bees were all the buzz at Cherry Creek State Park Wednesday as dozens of Colorado Girl Scouts got to work on their latest project. Keep putting pieces next to pieces until it makes a box. The goal, build bee hotels for the insects to lay their eggs safely. And by doing so, 11-year-old Amy Stone will earn her Think Like a Citizen Scientist badge. You don't even realize it, but you're being a citizen scientist just by looking at what's around you. The badge is one of 42 new ones created by the Girl Scouts of America this month. All are geared towards STEM learning in the outdoors. They can take what they've learned here and apply that to their next Girl Scout badge, apply it when they go back to school in science and math or in any aspect of their life. That's why today's lesson from the Colorado State Beekeeping Society was about so much more. Science is just one of the things where no matter how much you know, there is always more that you can learn. Amy Stone now plans to use similar scientific methods pursuing her next badge in robotics. Technology is just one of the things we take for granted, but it does so much in our lives. And I love those bees. Well, Colorado's communities are always volunteering for all kinds of projects, big or small ones. When it comes to cleaning up our waterways, it does take a lot of hands. Folks headed to a section of the South Platte River known as the Dream Stream to do a little cleanup. That area gets its name because it's famous for runs of rainbow and cutthroat trout that come in the spring, then brown trout and kokanee salmon in the fall. A park ranger says the volunteer cleanup is just a way of giving back to the river for all the rewards that it provides all the fishermen and women. The Douglas County Sheriff's Office truly loves getting in its communities, getting out and about. Well, this week, that meant hitting the runway with models from developmental pathways. Sheriff Spurlock and Captain Jensen were among the officers who joined the models for the fashion show at Macy's. This is the fifth year for the show featuring the models from developmental pathways. Works to make sure people with developmental disabilities are able to live fulfilling lives. And I love that they look so sharp. Well, it might be hard to believe, but summer is coming to an end with kids all across the state heading back to school. Among the districts that are already back in session, Cherry Creek, the district and superintendent shared a number of those back to school pictures on Facebook. It's always so much fun to see the students and the teachers reunite and excited and ready for a new school year. Show us how people are coming together where you live. We want to see your pictures and know what's going on where you are. So post it to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram using the hashtag for Colorado. And I'll be sure to share it right here on this show. Thank you for joining us on Together. Just a programming note, we will be off next week because of networking programming. We've got football. But I look forward to joining you again the following week for more inspiring stories of how people are coming together for Colorado and for each other. So please keep those ideas coming and most certainly share those fun photos while you're out and about. Until then, we leave you with a group of folks just hanging around our trees. These are professional tree climbers who are taking good care of all of our shade. Yeah, yeah for sure. Well, and that's what's fun is like so many people went into computers, um, you know, in the last computers were just paying crazy amounts of money. Yeah, you did talk to them. Yeah. Stop. Well, we have a lot of, in the yeah. universities, the top.